Let's give a nice AMA welcome yeah. to our friend Joe Bach. Thanks, Sam. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the Academy for inviting me here to participate in this year's AMA Expo. In addition, I'd especially like to thank the Academy of Model Aeronautics for all the support and encouragement we've received as a company and personally in preparation for this event and throughout the last 20 years that I've been involved in model aviation. What I'd like to do this afternoon is give everyone a brief background on myself and then give a brief overview of my company and some of the projects we've been involved with and how airplanes and uh, airplane models have played a major role in both. So I was born in Detroit, came out here to play football at University of Southern California. My parents encouraged me to pursue a degree in aerospace engineering while I was a member of the football team at USC. So uh, USC had a world-class aerospace and mechanical engineering department and I was fortunate enough to take advantage of that. The administration, my professors and the coaching staff were especially supportive of my track emphasis with regard to my aerospace engineering degree. Then, as, as it turns out, my parents were right. Football doesn't last forever, and a few injuries later, I found myself at Northrop Aircraft Division as a junior engineer in the engine integration department of the F-20 Tiger Shark and later on the YF-23 program. Since then, I started a company uh, in 1994 called Aerotelemetry. And it, it began as an outgrowth of uh, model airplanes and my interest in electronics. We've grown to have products and services that are used on almost, well, almost every single UAV project in the world and on uh, several mission critical projects like the NASA Space Shuttle. Another project we worked on, it's uh, fairly high profile, is one called the US Army Excalibur Guided Munitions Program. We do the telemetry receivers. It's a transmitter embedded in the artillery round that after they fire it, they can track it as it's in flight. So this is a partial list of the people that we deal with, partially responsible for why I don't get to spend as much time as I'd like flying model airplanes, is taking care of our customer base. We also, post 9-11, got involved in um, unmanned air vehicle design and fabrication. Prior to that, I, I think if you actually asked someone in public about what a UAV was, they would say uh, they, they didn't know. We picked up a lot of business post 9-11, and it, this is an example here. That's a all aluminum unmanned air vehicle that was used to um, help a company design some payload requirements that they had. Around the 2003 period of time, I was approached to do the airplanes for the movie The Aviator. I'll start with the H1 Racer. Again, due to time constraints, we had about three weeks to develop the H1 Racer from scratch. There was, there was no plans. There was no blueprints that we could go off of. We had a general idea of the shape, so you can see these photographs here. Basically, what we had done is used a computer to form those foam blocks and then used a team of talented sculptors that shaped the uh, fuselage and then put fiberglass over that and got it as close as they could get it to looking like an H1. Some point after that, we actually tried a smaller engine in the plane thinking that it would be a lot lighter than it was. That didn't work out. We didn't have enough time to make a pattern, make a mold pull apart. So we actually had to fly the pattern. And I, I think the fuselage was probably well over 200 pounds. The nature of the design of the H1 airplane, you've got about a six to one uh, difference between the CG and the tail of the plane and an awfully wide cord. Uh, our biggest concern after adding this new engine we have there and the landing gear was just trying to make sure the plane would balance. I think when we were all finished, we added 90 pounds of lead to the cowl, just the cowl, in addition to the engine that we had on there. These are some pictures from the first flight test and the second one. That's us at El Mirage Dry Lake, but on the first flight, we had some issues with the propeller. We cut the propeller diameter down because of ground clearance issues, and the, the unscale landing gear height was partially my call. I felt that it would be less of an imposition on the pilot to try and get that plane from the starting blocks up on the throttle 
without having it uh, turned to the left. We didn't have a steerable tailwheel. All we had was a tail skid. So I didn't know if that was going to be a problem, so we cut the landing gear short. And that's a picture of our H1 pilot. That's Jason Soames. Jason flew the H1 racer, not only at El Mirage on the first flight test, but at Santa Clarita as well. We flew it two more times there for the film cameras, and that worked out very well.